I thank you, Lord, that revelation knowledge shall flow freely today, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. Father God, I pray less of me and more of you, none of me and all of you. Think through my mind and speak through my vocal cords exactly the things that you'd have me to say to these, your sheep. I thank you, Father, that you've anointed them with ears to hear, hearts to receive, and a spirit to contain your word. It's in the holy, mighty, all-knowing, all-powerful name of Jesus, the anointed one, and the power of his anointing that we pray. And let all that agree shout amen. amen. Shout amen again. Amen. Give God another hand clap of praise. You may be seated. Thank you for my um, online viewers, online watchers. God bless you all. Uh, if you're in Orlando, you need to be in church. If you're not in Orlando, thank you for viewing online. Amen. I talked about that on Wednesday. Uh, it's time for us to come back to church. Amen? Amen. It's time for the church to come back to church. Amen. Amen. Y'all have used COVID for an excuse long enough. I'm, I'm just letting you know right now. Amen. Because why? Because today what we're talking about is the price of the anointing. Today we're talking about the price of the anointing. To operate in the anointing is neither cheap nor free. It requires you to give up something. To operate in the anointing requires you to give up something in order to receive something. You know, I talked to you guys on, on Wednesday night about your anointed. You're anointed in servanthood. You're anointed in salvation. You know, there are areas that we're anointed, but the Bible also tells us, go to John chapter 14. Let me show it to you. Because when we talk about this anointing, remember the anointing of God is what? Say it's the burden removing, yoke destroying power that was on Jesus. So the anointing of God is power. Say the anointing of God is power. Power from God. Not power from me. Power from God. You gotta get a revelation of that. The example of the anointing is Jesus. It's the burden removing. What is a burden in your life? It's the burden removing. The word of God, the anointing of God on our lives will remove burdens and destroy yokes. It will remove burdens and it will destroy yokes. We got to get a revelation of this. Now, our example is Jesus. How many of y'all agree Jesus, everywhere he went, if there was a burden or a yoke, he, the, the, the ability, the authority, the anointing was on his life to remove it. Do y'all agree with that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They brought, they brought the, the, the dumb kid to him, the kid that, that, you know, none of the disciples could do anything with him. His parents couldn't do anything with him. Jesus laid hands on him and he was healed, right? They, 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 they brought the dead to him. Nobody could do nothing with the dead. Jesus laid hands on the dead and the dead rose, right? They, they had a tax problem. Him and Peter, they, they had a tax issue. They didn't have the resources to pay the taxes. Peter didn't have the money to pay the taxes. Jesus said, go over there, get the fish, get in his mouth, and get, get the gold out of his mouth and pay, right? Right? See, some of y'all hear these and you think of them as stories. These aren't stories. These are real occurrences. The Bible's not a magic book and Jesus wasn't a genie. There is an anointing there. You know why God uses things like that in these examples? All he's trying to say is he's not telling you you're going to go get money out of a fish's mouth. What he's saying is when you think of taking care of something that requires finances, you think of working more, working harder, doing something relative to that. God's just telling you, trust me. I'm not even telling you it won't be opening up another business or deal with another business or excelling at the business that you're at. He's not even saying that. But what he's saying is, trust me. And the first way you trust God is you got to identify what are the burdens? What are the burdens? Debt is a burden. Debt is a burden. Amen? A sickness is a burden. Amen? Discord in a marriage is a burden. How many of y'all know unity is better than discord? 
The Bible says, how can two walk together, least they what? Be in agreement. So the Bible also says in John chapter 14, in verse 12, he says, Jesus said, this is in the red. That's why we know it's Jesus. He says, verily, verily, I say unto you that he that believeth on me, read it with me, ready? Read, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also and greater works than these shall he do because I go to the Father. Say, because of the anointing. See, he went to the Father to enable the Holy Spirit to come and indwell us. And once the Holy Spirit began to indwell us and lives on the inside of us, the Bible says in 1 John 4, 4, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So it says there's a greater force, there's a greater power that's in us than in, that's in the world. Say, I got blood type G. See, but the world's got you focused on your race, Puerto Rican, African-American, Italian-American. The world's got you focused on your education, how many degrees you have. The world's got you focused on who you know, who are you connected to, who are you down with. The world's got you, you know, who, who, who can help you? And you got blood type G on the inside. Of you. Say, I don't need none of them. You need the Holy Spirit. You need to tap into the Holy Spirit. But see, the problem is, so I told you all, I've been telling you the whole sermon series, you're anointed. And all of y'all are saying, well, pastor, if I'm anointed, why don't my life look anointed? Amen? Right? If I'm anointed, if wealth and riches are in my house, pastor, where are they at? I don't see them. Pastor, my marriage is anointed to be perfect. I'm fighting every night. Where is it at? Right? Pastor, you said that, you know, I have the identity of Christ. I don't identify with the world no more. I'm anointed. I still have self-esteem issues. I still feel timid. I still feel fearful. I still feel less than. Pastor, where is it at? I'm glad you asked. I have an answer. The Holy Spirit has an answer. Amen? We got to understand something about the anointing. First of all, we need to understand that the anointing that's on our life, say the anointing that's in me, it's not for you. The anointing on your life flows out of your life and it's to get on someone else's life. It's to help someone else. Now watch this, two things I want you to notice from what I said. Number one, it flows out. It flows out. So if there's something, remember I talked to you all about relationships? What kind of relationships do we have? Upward, peer to peer, and downward. So if the anointing is flowing out of your life, it's either gonna flow onto a peer to peer relationship or it's gonna flow onto a downward relationship. So when God has called and anointed you to speak life into, and to pour into. But let me ask you a question. If I got one bottle of water and Leroy is thirsty and I tell Leroy, open up your mouth. I got it tight. Open up your mouth. And I pour this whole bottle. I pour this whole bottle into Leroy's mouth to help him live. I pour it all. Now, it, now it's empty. What has to happen now? I got to get filled back up. And first of all, it should never come. It should come from the overflow. It should always be the overflow coming out of you. See, once this gets emptied, no matter how much I squeeze it, nothing's going to come out of it because there's nothing in it. Say the anointing costs something. It's not free and it's not cheap. Go to Psalms chapter 63. Y'all with me? Stick with me today. I, I, you know, I, I, I asked the Lord, you know, the Lord told me the other day on went in in the Word, He told me I had to slow down. The Holy Spirit said, you got to, you, you, you get talking a little bit quick. You got to slow down. And I got to realize that we have a lot of new people um, 
And sometimes I say things that I think people know, right? I got to stop assuming. Say assumption is the lowest form of knowledge. I got to stop assuming people know things. It says in Psalm 63, it says, God, thou art my God. This is David when he's in the wilderness of Judah and he's speaking to God. Watch this. He says, God, thou art my God. Early I will seek thee. Ooh. Seek God. Do you see that? He said, my soul thirsts for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry dray, in a, in a dry day. No, in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. This word water here represents the word. I'm going to show it to you. Water, when, anytime you hear the Bible talking about water, it's talking about the word of God. Life, living springs of water flowing through us. Watch this. He says, to see thy power and thy glory. So as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Do you see that? Because of thy loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise thee. Man, we're in praise and worship. My praise team is like pulling dead wood. We can't even get people to sing unto God. It's like pulling dead wood, man. David sung unto the Lord. David danced with the Lord. David praised God. David honored God. Watch what he says here. He says, my soul shall be satisfied with the marrow and the fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. When I remember thee upon my bed, and I meditate on thee in the night watch, meditating, meditating. You know what that word meditate means? It means to mutter. It means to mutter. You're literally muttering God's word. When you mutter God's word, when you meditate on God's word, you are chiseling his word on your heart. And when the enemy attacks you and the enemy comes at you, now instead of the Kardashians or the uh, housewives of Atlanta coming up, because that's what you've been meditating on. You know, plastic surgery and all these cars you can't afford, don't need, shouldn't even want. It's amazing to me, man. How many broke people talk about expensive automobiles? You're broke. People driving Mercedes and don't own a home. I got my car guys in here, right? Y'all see them, come fill out the application. Don't own nothing. Trying to buy a $50,000 automobile. $100,000 automobile. Can't even fix it if it breaks. Credit is a license to pretend. You're just being phony with yourself. Now, Pastor, what are, you, what are you saying, Pastor? I thought you was a prosperity preacher, Pastor. I thought you wanted me to live good and eat good and ride good and look good. I do. But I want you to really look good, really drive good, really eat good. Do you understand what I'm saying? And God will get you that. There was a time when I used to pull into the gas station, I used to have to call the, how many of y'all ever had to call the credit card and check what you had on it before you, before you got to the pump or before you went in the restaurant? And did I have any of y'all? Well, that was me. I used to go out and do things and I would pay half the, half the check on this card and half the check on that card. Do I have any of those guys? Right, right? What I'm saying is God don't want you doing those things. God wants you to go wherever you want to go, eat whatever you want to eat, drive whatever you want to drive, live wherever your little heart desires. The man was asking me yesterday, my wife and I were looking at a model. He said, so what, you know, so what, are, you, what are you thinking about? I said, well, I'm getting ready to pay my house off. Amen. Amen. He said, what? I said, yeah, next month I'm going to write a check and just pay my house off. could have paid my house off years ago, but I said till the house of the Lord was paid off, I wouldn't pay my house off. Amen. The house of the Lord is paid off now. Now I'll pay off my house. Amen. 
So I said, well, what, what, what you going to do? You go, oh, no, no, no. I said, no, I'm going to have a house in, in Orlando. We're going to have a house in Orlando. We're going to have a condo on the beach. And we're going to have a country house. We're going to have three. Is that okay? Is that all right? Hey, man, y'all could come and, you know, hey. We're going to go hang. The, the one I'm getting in the, in the country, man, I've not seen a couple of them. One of them has 12 rooms. Hey, man, I want to retreat. We could all take a little ride and hang out in the country. You know, when it, you know, because in Florida, we don't have no seasons. You know, when it snows, we can go up in the mountains. Hey, Amen. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying this. Listen to me. Say, God wants to do me good and make me happy. We serve a good God. He loves us. But what we got to understand, nothing is going to flow out of you till you thirst for him, till you put him first. Okay, I'm gonna hit some. I'm gonna hit some. I'm gonna hit some topics today. I'm gonna hit some statements today. You know, you've heard the statement. You know, my family's my first ministry. Yeah, I'm gonna show you that too. I'm gonna show it all to you because until you put God first and the things of God first, things are not gonna fully line up. Things will partially line up. Things will kind of line up. Say, how many y'all want? How many y'all want a partial blessing? I don't. I mean, it's good. I'm all right with it but I want the full blessing. Amen. Amen. I want the full blessing, right? So it says to operate in the anointing, like I said, it's not cheap and it's not free. When you really want something, watch this. When you really want something, you inquire about the cost. You inquire about what the qualification process is. You inquire about how do you get access to ownership, right? You inquire, right? See, I have, a, I have a saying in sales. You know, I'm, I'm you know, they, they wrote a book about me called The Greatest Salesman Ever Lived. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Y'all laughing. I believe that. Amen. I don't believe there's nobody better than me. Amen. Why are you so good, Pastor? I'm going to tell you real quick. I lose fast. Many salespeople don't think that way. I'm not going to go, I was like, man, y'all, what y'all do? Car sales? Man, let me tell you. That's real simple for me. It's some real quick qualifications. What do you drive now? Well, I drive that blah, blah, blah. Really? You know, who's that finance with? Oh, yeah, see, I'm, I'm, I'm qualifying. What, what are you paying? I'm qualifying. I'm, I'm sizing it up. Because the minute he starts talking about the Ford F-150 twin turbo, whatever, that's $80,000, right? And he comes in, Leroy, driving a, <laughs> yeah, that. yeah, that, you know. No. <laughs> See, it, it, it doesn't matter if you have a 780. If the most you've ever financed in a car is $10,000, they're not going to let you finance 80. Right. Miss, Mr. Finance Manager right here. I didn't ask him before. Is that probably a true statement? You got to walk up. You got to go from 10 to 30 or 10 to 20. And then you go from 30 to, right? They want to walk you up. Do you realize in America, let, let me tell you something about America. Remember the great country I was talking about? It's a great country, but it's also a lot of okie doke going on. Do you realize that America, hey, I'm not talking about the okie doke to keep you down. You're down because you're ignorant. Let me, just, let me just say that. Blame whoever you want. You're down because you are ignorant. There is too much access to education, right? You ain't got to go to Harvard. You don't have to go to Yale. You don't have to go anywhere. You just got to get your little phone out, and you got to stop looking at TikTok and Tweety and twerking and all of that and watching makeup videos and eyelash videos and doing all this stuff that don't make you no money. Don't help your family. Guys, you got to stop playing. Let me get all my guys now. You got to stop playing fantasy football, dream football, little video games like a little three-year-old. You notice they make up all these little three-year-old games. Fantasy basketball. Fan they got fan fantasy. Why do you want to do anything that's a fantasy? That's my question. I live in the real world. I don't live in the fantasy world. But you can learn anything. You can educate yourself. And let me tell you something. Do you realize that America only gives you benefits to stay in debt? 
You get a deduction for a home mortgage. Why don't they give you a deduction for, why don't they give you a benefit for paying your mortgage off? Oh, they don't want your mortgage. What's the, what is the number one commercial on TV today? Oh, so I heard somebody say it. Re, refinance your house. Take a second mortgage, right or wrong? Why? Because they know the values of homes, right? Alta came here and get home at night. Poor lady, they got her at the desk day and night. Finance, finance, refinance, right, Alta? I mean, I'm, y'all got them lined up out the door to refinance houses. They want you to take your equity. They don't want your equity, they want your life. They want to keep you to be a slave. That's what they want. Amen. And what do they do? They dangle a nice little, oh, we're going to update, update, update your kitchen. You don't cook nothing, no way. What do you need an updated kitchen for? What do you cook? When was the last time you cooked anything except a hot pocket? Update your, update your microwave. That's what you need to update. Amen. That's all. Matter of fact, we can just get rid of the kitchen out of the house altogether. Just put a sink and a microwave. We're good to go. Amen? So we have to understand, we must focus. And the anointing of God, when you really want something, you got to inquire about. So what does it take? The first thing you must have to operate in the anointing is a thirst for God. Say a thirst for God. Watch this. A, a thirst is a like a keen desire. You must literally crave the manifestation of the power of God in your life. You have to come to the point to where you're believing God for things you know you can't do. Not things you know you, you can write a business plan and put together. Amen. I remember my wife looked over at me that time. Pastor said, you know, I believe it's the will of God for every born again believer to be a millionaire. And, uh, you know, I got, man, he hit me. I'm like, hmm. And my wife looks over at me and she says, not you. She said, not us. She said, you're going to make a million dollars in a year. I said, woman, shut up. Millionaire, you don't even know what that means, man. You know what it is just to be a millionaire? Talking about making them, make a million dollars. Y'all know how much that is? You know how much it is every, because after my wife told me that, I got to thinking about it. I had to repent. I said, you know what? I received what you said. And you know what I did? I went and figured out how much was a million dollars a day? How much was it a week? How much was it a month? How much was it a quarter? How much was it semi-annually? And I know how much it is annually. And in 2011, the worst economy we ever had, I made over a million dollars. Why? Because my man of God spoke it. I received I was going to be a millionaire. And the reason why that was important was she said, I already knew I was going to be a millionaire. That wasn't like even a doubt. I'm telling you, all of you, if you would just understand what God has called us to do and you attach yourself to a vision and you begin to tap into the anointing of God, the Bible says money is the elementary thing. Making money is easy. Building wealth is easy. Easy. I told some folks, I remember when we first got here. I'm going to show you some stuff. See, people don't listen to the man. See, one thing I always say, I listen to my pastor. I had people when I first, when we first got into this church, I told some folks, there's houses, the housing market is going to go up. And I said, there are houses around here, y'all need to buy their $100,000. Buy these houses. Fix them up. You'll live in them for three or four years and you'll be able to sell them and go buy the house you want. I talked to a young man who works at the IHOP. He did what I said, a uh, 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 Muslim. Bought a house right around the corner for 110,000, I think he said, wasn't it, LeBron? He just sold it for 320 grand. 320 grand, made $200,000 in three years. And you trying to figure out how to get a promotion on your job. Promotion on your job ain't gonna make you wealthy. We gotta use our head. We gotta tap into the anointing. What's the anointing? When the man or woman of God speak, listen to what's going on. Amen. Do you understand? When you're in battle and you have a commander that's looking at the whole battlefield 
And all you're looking at is the little foxhole you're fighting in. How many of you know he knows a little bit more about what's going on in the grand scheme of things than you do because you're in the battle? When I fought, man, I had the greatest corner man ever, Jimmy Williams. And what I loved about Jimmy, he never got excited. He never got, he would just sit there and I'd listen to everything he said. Son, he's lowering his left. He's lowering his left. When he steps forward with his right, just throw your left hook. He's lowering his left. Just throw it. Don't think about it. Just throw it. It's there. It's wide open. Bam! Down they go. Why? Because I'm in the midst of the battle. I can't see what's going on. I mean, I, I can kind of tell, but he's watching. That, that's the purpose of the covering. That's why, that's why you have a covering. So they can help you. See, it's not just church. See, we keep thinking about just church. What, 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 who did the opening day? Like, what do you say? It's our receiving day. That's what we're going to start saying on Sundays again. Today is our receiving day. We come to receive, to get correction, to get encouragement, to get direction on what we need to do to win. Amen. We got to win. And the anointing of God is going to flow out of your life. So the first thing that we must have to operate in the anointing is the thirst. You must literally crave the manifestation of God's power in your life. Amen? If you are thirsty for the anointing, you must go to the water. And the water is the word. Go to John chapter 7. Let me show it to you. Go to John chapter 7. Say the water is the word. Ooh, yeah. The anointing flows. John chapter 7. In verse 38, I just want to read this to you in the Amplified. John chapter 7, verse 38. Watch this. It says, he who believes in me, watch this, who cleaves to and trusts in and relies on me. You, you still got people that want to argue about the word of God. When you got somebody who wants to debate and argue the word of God with you, do me a favor. Do it once. Maybe. Maybe do it twice. But don't do it a third time. Let them argue. Buy them a mirror. So here's a mirror. Put it in front of them. Say, now you argue with yourself. Because I believe the word. You know, they need all these. They, see, they don't need explanations. They're asking you all those questions because they don't believe and they don't like that you believe. And what they're trying to do is talk you off of what you believe. That's why you got to be careful. You get around your friends, you get around relatives, even other Christians. They don't believe like you believe. Don't operate in faith. They're not even asking you to learn or to inquire to get better. They're asking you because they doubt what it is you're saying. You know how you convert those people? Anybody know? Raise your hand if you know. How do you convert those people? Yes, Isaiah. You'd be a light to influence them. That was good, but not what I'm looking for. Yes, Ashley. Your life. Your life. You live it. You walk it. See, my family knows who Nick was before Christ. I don't have to preach, I don't have to preach nothing to them. I don't, have to, I don't have to crack the Bible. I don't have to say a word to none of my cousins, none of my brothers and sisters. I don't have to say a word to nobody. I led at the age of 64 years old, I led my dad to Christ. Not because of the Bible, because of the life I lived in front of him. You understand that? See, and then some of y'all get upset when people won't listen to you and follow you. Maybe your life's still a little bit raggedy. Maybe you're not thirsting enough. Because if you really have the word in you, that wouldn't bother you anyway. It don't bother me what anybody thinks. I know what God thinks, and that's all that matters. In John chapter 7, in verse 38 in the Amplified, look at this. He says, he who believes in me, who cleaves and trusts in and relies on me. See, are you still relying on your job? You know how you know? You're not a tither. You're not a giver. You don't trust God. You trust your money. See, that, that's the evidence of who you trust. You, you ain't giving up your money. Oh, I, I, I pass, I'll come and sweep the parking lot. But I'm not giving up my money. Right, so money still has you. It's okay. Say it's okay. It's just where you're at. But no, you're never gonna be anointed 
to get to the level God wants you as long as you put your trust in money, as long as you put your trust in things. Watch. He says, as the scripture has said, from his innermost being shall flow continuously springs and rivers of what? Living water. See, the difference in the word of God and a spring is it's living. It's a living water. It's a living word. Faith is a living force produced by a living word to give living proof. The whole purpose of faith is first to prove something to yourself and then to prove something to those that you've been called to. See, you could talk about it all you want, but when you start living it and the anointing of God starts flowing out of your life, it's a whole different story, right? To truly have a thirst for something, you have to recognize and clearly see the value of having it. Let me say that again. To truly have a thirst for something, you have to clearly recognize, you have to clearly thirst for something. You have to recognize and clearly see the value of having it. In the book of Mark, chapter 4, verse 25, I'm going to read this in the New Living Translation, but I want you to see this. It says, to those who listen to my teachings, watch this, more understanding will be given. Isn't that interesting? Jesus said, to those who what? Listen to my teaching, more understanding. Some of you want to know why you're not getting more understanding. You're not putting the word in. You're hearing it here. But because this is wrong, that's where it stops. That's where it stops. Because you're still looking at the man. You're still looking at the vessel. It's God speaking to you. This is God's word, not my word. He says to those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given. Watch this. But for those who are not listening, even what little understanding they have will be taken away from them. See, God ain't gonna take nothing away from you. The enemy, the de say the devourer. See, the Bible says when we give, the devourer is rebuked for our sake. Why? Because we're trusting God. When we give of our time, when we give of our treasure, when we give of our talent, God requires us to give of our time, treasure, and talent. Watch this. How many days are there in a week? You know, I hear people say all the time, my family is my first ministry pastor. You know, uh, you know, the last church we were in, they had us doing everything. The last church we were in, we, we had to do this and we had to do that. You know the good thing about this church, you don't have to do nothing. You don't. You don't have to give, you don't have to serve, you don't have to do anything. To have salvation, to go to heaven, you don't have to do nothing. All you gotta do is receive Jesus. I'm not talking about just getting by. I'm talking about walking in the blessing. I'm talking about God blowing your mind like never before. You got to understand what God will do. God will do things you can never think, ask, or even. God will do things in your life you didn't even know how to ask for because you didn't think it was even in the realm of possibility. I was focused my whole life on trying to buy one house. Now I'm going to own, say own, three houses. Amen. 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 Why? Because that's what God will do. Why? I'm faithful. Amen. Been faithful for a long time. This didn't just happen. See, that's another thing. It's a problem with Christians. You know, they, they want to hop in now. They, they, they want, you know, let me touch the pastor and just let that all just rub. No, it don't work that way. No. I know a lot of them other preachers want you to believe that. Come to the church. Let's lay hands on you. Let me, there's nothing wrong with laying hands, especially if you believe it. It's powerful. It's powerful. But all you do when you lay hands is add your faith with their faith. If they don't have no faith, there's nothing to add to. That's why people walk into Benny Hinn conference and they get healed and they walk out and they're sick again. Why? Because he ejected his faith and his anointing into them for that minute or two. Oh yeah. And they got healed and they were healed. But they didn't have the faith to contain what they had received. 
Do you understand? The Bible says you can't pour new wine into old wine skin. At least when the new wine gets in, it will burst the old wine skin. You can't, you, 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 there's no, it's not a braggadocious thing. You can't think like me. You can't believe like me. The word's not in you to do that. It's not that I do anything special. It's just the word that's been deposited in me and I've read and received. It's not even about the words you hear. You could sit here. It's like my pastor told me. He said, why is it, you know, in our church, we had a big church fight. He said, we have a hundred leaders sitting on the front row. Why is it that you're the one walking in? Why? I'm not special. I mean, I look good, but I'm not special. Right? I am God's favorite child. But why is it? Because I received it. I honored the word. See, so many of us have, and, and, and here's what I do when I, does it say, does this Pastor Nick? I'm not telling anybody to do this. But when I got there, see, I shut everything out. I disconnected from all my friends. We didn't have social media. I didn't listen to Benny Hinn and T.D. Jakes and Joe Osteen. And I listened to Pastor Greg Poe because that's where God had called me. That's what God wanted to pour into me. That was what was going to, that's where the brook, where God called me to, to transform my life. Disconnected from my family. Amen. I didn't say I didn't go see my mom and my dad and my aunts and my aunt. I'm t- I just I didn't sit, I didn't sit around and have idle conversations with people. I wasn't interested. Because they're not heading in the direction I'm heading. Y'all with me? There's 168 hours in a week. God requires a tenth of everything. A tenth of our resources. This, this, this is faithfulness. A tenth of our time and a tenth of our talent. You come to church three hours on Wednesday, three hours on Sunday, if you come on Wednesday and Sunday. And then if you watch every Wednesday in the Word, that's another two hours. That's six, seven, that's eight hours. You know what a tenth of 168 is? Say 17. Well, but pastor, I read and study on my own. Use a lot. He's so tired with Christian with all that phony, that phony. You lying. Pastor, I'd be on my bending knees. No, ain't nothing bending. No, no. We can look at you and tell you ain't bending. Ain't nothing bending. You, you bend down here. You can't get up. Oh, oh. I felt good yesterday. I was out with Tony and Haiti, and Tony caught a cramp. It made me feel good. I, I thought I was the only one that caught a cramp. Tony said, Pastor, I, I caught a cramp. I was like, all right, Lord. Because, you know, Tony looks good. Tony, Tony, bop. You know, I'm like, man, that's all right. See, not just me. Amen. What are you saying? I, I'm not saying you don't study the Word and you don't pray. I'm just saying let's be real with ourselves. Are we really... Are we really pursuing God? Are we really putting in the time, right? Because the tenth is that. If we really want the anointing, we're going to have to make a decision that we're willing to commit to putting God in the things of God first. Because you got to be filled. You got to be filled. And then you got people. Let me ask y'all a question. Watch this. I'm going to give y'all the example. Remember I was talking about the family first thing, right? Because a lot of people use that as a reason, you know, I got to take care of my family. So I'm going to ask y'all a question. I want y'all to answer the question. You're in Florida. Your your child has a disease that's going to kill them in two weeks if you don't get them this medication. They have to have this medication. The medication resides in California. And the only way for you to get from Florida to California is by car. And if you get to California, you will get medication that will be given to your child and your child will live and not die. Okay? Where is the cure? California. Where is the cure? You need the cure for your child to what? To live. The only way to get to California is how? By car. What right now in your life is the single most important thing in your life? 
What is the single most important thing in your life right now? Your car. Why? Not the cure. The cure is no good because if you can't get to the cure, the child's still going to die. You can never put anything before God. God is the cure. You got to get to the cure. The word of God, your purpose in the kingdom is what's going to solve all your problems. Not sitting down, well, I need to spend more time with my kids. No. If you're messed up, maybe your kids don't need to be around you. Maybe you're the reason why they are like they are. So maybe you need to get in the word to get the anointing to now know what to say to your kids. But pastor, they're growing up. Do you know the Bible says God will redeem the time? Do you understand that? Man, I was a horrible father. Still not a real good father. I'm a better father. But I believe as life is going on, God is redeeming things between me and my daughters and me and my son. Why? Because I know I honored God to get my life straight. I wasn't a horrible father when I was in church. I was a horrible father when I was in the world. See, that's another thing we don't understand. But pastor, you know, I'm always, see, and you let the devil tell you that. I'm always at the church. No, you ain't. You play fantasy football more than you come to the church. You watch the Housewives of Atlanta and New Jersey and the Potomac and, and Puerto Rico and everywhere more than you come to church. Amen. Netflix and Amazon. Man, y'all spend more time in front of the TV. Y'all remember what we used to call it? What do we used to call it? The boob, the boob tube. That's why we got a bunch of boobs. Amen. Amen. Man, if I was broke, I wouldn't be spending one minute in front of the TV. Amen. Not one. And another thing you see Christians doing, we endorse things. We put our, we're supposed to be the, the anointed and the stuff that we endorse. I seen a girl the other day, she, she comes on my, 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 my winning in the word faith, faith. She put in a post, this girl just flat out cursing. Now, if you listen to what the girl said, was there something good about what the lady was saying? Yeah, but she's dropping an F-bomb to every other word. And you're endorsing it. And they want to talk about Christ over here. No, man. We can't endorse the things of the world and say we're pursuing the things of God. Are y'all understanding me? Oh, oh see, y'all got quiet. See, the anointing, listen, this, this is advanced class today. If you're not there, it's okay. Don't get upset. Don't get mad with Pastor Nick. I'm just trying to share with you God wants to impart an anointing in your life that's going to allow your life to make a difference. See, in order to want this anointing, you're going to have to take your eyes off yourself. Because what did I say? The anointing on your life is not for who? It's not for you. It's not for you. It's for somebody else. It could be for your mom. It could be for your dad. See, and here's the thing that we don't get. Because we, don't, we just don't, we don't believe the Bible. It's why we don't get this. We're not talking about the next 10 years of your life. Say we're talking about eternity. Eternity. It's different. It's different. Say it's for keeps. It's chess, not checkers. Right, James? Chess, baby. Amen. James, my chess man. Chess and checkers are two totally different things. Amen? So you have to think about it. So today I want to talk about seven. I'm, I'm ready to teach now. Y'all ready? I'm going to get into my message now. Seven foundational things that you must establish in your life before you can ever begin to experience the true power of the anointing that Jesus operated in. I don't know about y'all, but man, Jesus is my mentor. I'm just letting y'all know. I want to be like Jesus. When I grow up, I don't want to be like Mike. I want to be like Tom Brady. Amen? They're all good. I want to be like Jesus. I want to show up, and everywhere I show up, if there's a problem, I, the anointing is on my life to solve the problem. Amen? Why? Because I love people. I love people. The problem with us, we don't love people. We love ourselves. 
It's all about us. That's what we're building, the selfish society. The selfish society. You know, we have code words now we use. Now, now they have code words. I'm going to get into code words on Wednesday night. Number one, number one, you have to get under the covering of an anointed ministry. Number one, you have to get under the covering of an anointed ministry. You have to get under the covering. The Bible, God told the prophet Elisha to get hence to a certain brook. And he said it was at that brook when there was going to be drought that he would feed them. The Bible says there was going to be a famine and there was going to be a drought in the land. First Kings chapter 17. He told Elijah to turn eastward and go to the brook Sherub. And he said, there, there will be water for your thirst and I will command the ravens to feed you. And God took care of Elijah because he got up under, he was under the anointing, amen? Number two, you must, uh, you must develop an honest prayer life. You must develop an honest prayer life. Well, pastor, why do you say an honest prayer? prayer life. Because an honest prayer life is a complete prayer life. See, too many of us, when we pray to God, we're literally begging God. We get on our knees. We tell God all our problems. We tell God all the things we want him to do for us. Right? Lord, I need this. Lord, I need that. Lord, can you do this? Lord, why, why did he do that to me? Lord, can, can, you, can you make that one fall off the building so he you, you know all the things we talk to God about. An honest prayer life is an inner inspection. The, fir the first thing your prayer life and when you pray to God should start out with is you. Say it with me. Create in me, O Lord, a clean heart and renew in me a right spirit. See, sometimes prayer is not talking. Prayer is communication. Communication is two ways. Sometimes it's Lord creating me a clean heart and renewing me a right spirit. And now you just shut up. Did that sound? That's the sound that Christians hate. That's out right there. Can't stand it. You know why? Because that's where God can talk to you. God ain't going to talk to you in an audible voice. Listen to me. If God speaks to you in an audible voice, you better run. You better listen to what he's saying. And you better get it right. God is a spirit. The Bible says those who worship the Lord worship him in spirit and in truth. God spoke to me one time in an audible voice. I was coming out of a poker room at 6 a.m., walking through McFarland Park. He said, hey, boy, that's, that's what he said, in an audible voice. And I looked up in the tree, and I saw what I needed to see to get me back on the right track. And that's when I made a decision to re permanently rededicate my life to Christ. From that day to this day, I've been, I've been walking. <laughs> Why? Because I was so far out of the will of God. That was the only way for him to get my attention. He don't have to do that now. Now he just says, hey, 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 son. He calls me son or boy. When he calls me son, he wants to love on me. When he calls me boy, he's going to correct me. See, some of y'all, see, some of y'all couldn't deal with that. A white guy calling you boy. That'd be a problem with some of y'all. Oh, I said, I ain't taking it back. I'm serious. This is how ridiculous we've gotten with everything. People used to ask me, how can you have a black spiritual father? Can you think of the ignorance of that statement? Can you imagine that, Harry? I actually had somebody ask me that. I've had several people ask me that. I said, you know why you can't understand that I have a black spiritual father? Because you don't know God. Would you like me to get you saved? I'm talking to a preacher. Would you like me to get you saved? See, y'all think just because people have the title that they're something. Your title don't make you what you are. Your title, anybody can give somebody a title. What you do is what you are. 
Amen? Tarshila is a, an anointed minister of worship. She's a minister, a, a licensed minister. She's never said that to none of y'all. None of y'all ever even knew that. Could you tell it? Yes, you can. She's anointed to do it. The Tifa, where's the Tifa? She left. Oh, she's been an anointed minister. Now, she hasn't, hasn't been acknowledged yet, but it's that Jeremiah. Does somebody need to acknowledge it? Do they need? Yes. Why? Because it helps their confidence and helps them grow. But nobody don't need to put a label on you. You don't, nobody has to tell you I'm a pastor. Look at my life. Look at my day. Look at what I do every day. Amen. I tell people to tell me, they tell me, pastor, you know, but I got, I got, you know, I work and, you know, I got a family and I got, I got this and I got that. You know, I'm just sitting there listening. You know, sometimes you need to know who you're talking to before you go talking all that talk. I just open this up and I show it to him. You probably can't see that, but this says, this is my Marriott's rewards. This says 700, say 700. And 57 nights in the last seven years. That's over a hundred nights a year while we were building this church. I never missed a Sunday. I never missed a Wednesday. I never missed a Saturday. Do you understand? Say commitment to the things of God. And I did my job and made hundreds of thousands of dollars a year doing it. And was the best at doing it. Why? Because the anointing's on my life. What does the anointing say to burden removing? Yoke destroying? Power? This all Jesus. If there's something that's burdening you about your servanthood to God, then obviously you're not anointed. You need to get more anointed. What does that mean? You need to get more in the Word. First thing you need to do is you need to what? Get under an anointed ministry. You're there. Now you need to develop an honest prayer life. Go to Psalms chapter 145. Psalms 145. Man, you got to talk to God. You got to develop a real relationship with God. You got to get to know God as boy or son or whatever, whatever it is that he wants to call you. Amen? God talks to me. Every day God talks to me. It's not like a, 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 a ooh, God talked to me. You know what Jesus told me? He said to me, he said, son, they're not hearing me because they're not listening. I'm talking, they're not listening. How many of us really listen to God? How many of us need, see, another day, I didn't need Jesus to come down. I didn't need the whole burning bush experience because God gave me a man of God that can hear from God. I was telling my wife the other day, we're going to do it within a month or two. One thing I didn't do that my pastor told me to do I brought, came to my remembrance uh, the other day when we were looking at house. He told us to buy an acre of land. I didn't, I didn't do that. Oh yeah, I'm going to go buy. I'm not going to buy an acre. I'm going to buy an acre for every year I was disobedient. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to buy about 20 acres of land. Hallelujah. Amen. Everything that man ever spoke to me, I did. I would go in his office and get counsel about my job. I was in technology. Pastor Poe couldn't spell technology. Not, not from a spelling sense. He didn't know nothing about technology. He didn't understand cloud. He didn't understand contact center. He didn't understand routers and servers and blade servers and the, the stuff that I was all involved in. But I would go sit there with him and tell him, hey, pastor, this is going on, this is going on. What do you think? No, that's not God. That was it. One time I, was, I got offered a job. I had a $75,000 base salary and a $75,000 OTE, meaning that, that was my compensation side. 150 OTE. I got offered a job that gave me double base salary from 75 to 150 and from 75 to 150 on my OTE. Say double. How many of y'all would have turned that down if I told you that wasn't God? None of y'all. Well, I, let me, I repent. But I'm just saying. Think about it. What, I guarantee it wouldn't be a big percentage. No, pastor, man, he, 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 man, he ate some collard greens. We're a prosperity church, man. I know doubles for me. Think about it. 75,000 to 150,000. 
75,000 of compensation to 150,000. $150,000 a year, you're making about $10,000 a month. $300,000 a year, you're making about $20,000 a month. How many of y'all can tell $10,000 a month? No. You still fighting over a tithe. You want to know why the tithe is important. See, if God can't trust you with the dime, he'll never be able to trust you with decisions like that. See, he could trust me. Now, I'm not telling y'all it wasn't difficult. I went home and I, I went home and I threw up. I was sick. Laid in the bed for a whole day. I'd never been depressed in my life. I'm just telling y'all the truth. Laid in the, my wife had to open the curtains up. Come on, you're going to have to get up. Oh, I was sick. Amen. Because it was also in a place where I believed that we were called to do ministry down in Fort Lauderdale, in Pembroke Pines. That's where I believe God gave me my first vision. So it all lined up. But the fact was, it's like God said, now we're going to see if you're really faithful. Because faithfulness comes when you are faithful to the one you say you are serving. That's why God puts, puts this order in the earth realm. God's not, you know the thing I, I think that people really got to come to a revelation of before they can really receive the anointing? God's not dumb. Y'all still think God is dumb. Y'all still think God hasn't figured it out. He has figured it out. And the minute you get a revelation that he knows more than you know, you'll be able to grow to where he wants you to go. Until then, you're going to stay, stay right where you're at. Amen? Amen? Psalms 145, verse 18. Look at what he says here. He said, The Lord is nigh unto all of them that call upon him, and to all that call upon him in what? In truth. So we got to have an honest prayer life. We got to be real with ourselves. We got to be real with God. Prayer can't be all motivational. How many of y'all believe there's some things in your, your, your life you need to get cleaned up? I'm not talking about sin, neither when I say cleaned up. I'm not worried about your sin life. I'm worried about your faith life. Why? Your faith life will overcome your sin life. See, you keep trying to deal with your sin life instead of dealing with your faith life. Deal with the word in your life, and the word in your life will deal with the sin in your life. See, you're trying to deal with the fruit and God wants you dealing with the root. Amen. Okay? Amen. Number three, get a fresh infilling of the Spirit of God every day. We must be filled with the Word. Some of y'all come on winning in the Word every morning. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Amen? Jerry, you come on winning in the Word every morning. Do you feel it helps you? It helps your, your, just your outlook, right? The way you go. It's the Word of God. I don't understand. Why, why? If you get what passed, but I'm, I'm going to work, then watch it when you get to work. Watch it on your break. You don't have to watch it right at 8 o'clock. But watch it. And don't tell me you're watching it because I know who's watching and who ain't watching it. Why? Because I know technology. I know every time you watch every video. How about that? Right, Jeremiah? sit up here and lie if you want to. You're just lying to yourself. I know. I know how many times you've been to the website. Oh, yeah. Them porn sites know how, much, how many times you come to. See, so you think you're slick. They know. You ain't slicking nobody. You're just slicking yourself. Amen. They know everything you're doing. Everywhere you go. Everywhere you eat. So you can't hide no more. No more peekaboo. Amen? Get a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit every day. You must get full with the Word. Number four, spend time in prayer. Spend time in worship. Spend time in praise and commune with the Holy Spirit every day. How many of y'all in here drive to work? Great time to spend time praising God. Stop, let, who, 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 what's the main radio station here, here in Orlando? The main hip-hop radio station. Who, who's the guy? Michael Bay, Michael, stop listening to Michael Bayston. He's an idiot. Stop listening to all this stuff. Want to know why your heart ain't right? Got constant racism being poured into your heart. Amen. Stop listening to Fox News. Stop listening to CNN. 
All they want to do is stir up division and strife and hate all of them, the right and the left. Listen to God. Elizabeth, every now and then she'll send me a, she'll send me a picture, man, of Elevation Worship. Get you, get you some good channels. Elevation Worship, Carrie Job, whoever you like, Kurt Frank. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, Lord. Get you some praise and worship. Amen? Begin to praise God. Spend time worshiping God. There's a difference between praising God and worshiping God. Totally different. Praising is jubilee. Praising is excitement. Praising is, hey man, you know, y'all know what I mean. <laughs> worshiping is, you know, that's crying. That's, 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 you know, I can't worship God while I'm driving. I get lost, man. I just, amen. Take the will, Jesus. Amen. When I say spend time communing with them, spend time listening to them. Man, y'all all got notes on your iPhone? Get a note that says God. And when God talks to you, write down in the note what God is saying to you. Begin to journal about what God is saying to you. Amen? Amen? Go to Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. Y'all all right? I'm going to go a little bit over. Is that all right? Just a little bit. Five minutes. Repent, reflect, and receive daily. Repent. I'm not talking about, Lord, I, I smoked weed last night. Lord, I looked at this woman last night. Lord, I'm not talking about repent. No. Repent of areas that you did not operate in faith. See, instead of repenting about drinking, repent why you didn't come to God. Ask the Lord to strengthen you. Luke chapter 18, look at this. Verse 10. Say, repent, reflect, and receive daily. Amen. The three R's. Luke chapter 18 in verse 10. He says this, two men went up into the temple to pray and one of them a Pharisee and the other one a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not such as the other men's exhorters, unjust, adulterers, blah, 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 right? Verse 12, I fast twice a week. I give my tithe. I get all the stuff, right, that he's doing. It says, and then the publican stood afar off and would not lift up such as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. You see that? Verse 14, he says, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other, for every one that exalts himself shall be abased, and he, shall, and he that humble himself shall be exalted. The one guy's talking about all the things he did. He thought to qualify himself. I went to church. I tithed. I listened to winning in the word. I listened to the heart of the, I, I checked all the boxes. You need to be doing things, but you need to be doing things with the right motive. You need to be doing things with the motive to please God and to know why. When we're pursuing the anointing, the purpose of the anointing is to be filled so that we can overflow. And we have to pursue God to have the anointing working in our life. Number six, learn to yield to the Holy Spirit. Learn to, ye learn to, learn to yield to the Holy Spirit. Stop saying something said. Stop saying something said. Say the Holy Spirit said. It's the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. Learn to practice the presence of God. When the Holy Spirit speaks to your heart, acknowledge him audibly out of your mouth. Acknowledge him audibly out of your mouth. Why, you're training your ear. Yeah, I'll say that, Lord. Yeah, thank you, Lord. I'll do that, Lord. Yeah, yeah I know some people are going to think you're a little bit crazy. That's okay. Say, it's for God. It's for God. Number seven, fellowship with the Holy Spirit. We got a fellowship 
Make communing with the Holy Spirit a top priority in your life and be consistent. Read John 8. Let's go to John 8. We'll end right here. John 8. John 8 and verse 31. John 8. Turn your Bibles to John 8. Man, I'm about to get y'all some Bibles. I made a rule today. Any of my people that come up to receive offering, they can't come up with their iPhone. Got to have a Bible. Yeah, we ain't coming up here with our iPhones no more. We're going to be a Bible toting church. I might just buy everybody a Bible. Just, then, I can, then, I can, then I can get on you if you don't have a Bible. Amen. We need our Bibles, man. Nobody's going to stop you from looking at your iPhone. But they'll stop you when you're reading your Bible. And they'll want to know. Don't y'all know our first calling is to spread the gospel to the uttermost parts of the world? John chapter 8 and verse 31. John chapter 8 and verse 31. I said we must fellowship with the Holy Spirit every day. Verse 31, he says, Then Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. Verse 32, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. If you come continue in my word, if we want the anointing of God to operate in our life, the price of the anointing is that we sell out to God, to the word of God, and to the things of God. We sell out to God, to the word of God, and to the things of God. We have to sell out to making God part of our everyday life. Not just on Wednesdays, not just on Sundays, not just on Saturdays, but our everyday life. We're seeking the Father. We're hearing what the Father's saying to us. We know what the Father wants for us. You guys should, man, you're in this church. You should know what God wants. What does God want? Say he wants to do me good and make me happy. Isn't that simple? Say it again. He wants to do me good and make me happy. And whatever you've done yourself without him in the natural, he wants to do a hundredfold better. Ooh-wee. How about that? Why? He wants you to do exploits. What are exploits? Things that, that, that man can't explain. Things that man can't explain. Amen. Y'all get anything out of the word today? Give God some praise. Stand to your feet. Y'all didn't get number five? What's wrong with y'all? Number five was repent, repent, reflect, and receive daily. Number one, get under, the, get under the covering of an anointed ministry. Number two, develop an honest prayer life. Number three, get a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit every day. Number four, spend time in prayer, time in worship, time in praise, and time in commune with the Holy Spirit. Number five, reflect, repent, reflect, and receive. Number six, learn to yield to the Holy Spirit. Number seven, fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Give God another hand clap of praise. Bow your heads right where you're at. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Father, for your word. I thank you, Father, for each and every person uh, at the sound of my voice. I thank you, Father, just for the, your anointing, Lord, uh, just being in their life, being present in their life, Father, just alive in them, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, today for just a renewed thirst, a renewed hunger for you, Lord, a renewed sense of your presence being in their lives, Lord. I thank you, Father God, that you just create in them a clean heart, Lord, and renew in them a right spirit. Lord, I thank you, Father, that you love them so much that it is your only desire to see them win, to see them prosper, to see them be in good health. Lord, I thank you, Father, for it now. In the name of Jesus, amen.